Tom, are you okay? I lost her. Her? She was going to be this epic, trilogy-worthy character. I was going to be the hottest writer in Hollywood. But I can't get past Act 1! You need some writer's group therapy. Hello and welcome to Writer's Group Therapy. I'm Tom. And I'm Roshni. We're writers helping writers. Are you ready for your session? The doctors are in. And if you like what you hear, make sure you subscribe and share it with your friends. You can find us online at writersgrouptherapy.com. We're also on Twitter and Instagram at WG Therapy. Our individual handles? I'm Tom underscore Loveman on Twitter and Tom Loveman on Instagram. And I'm at Moon Lily Music on Instagram and at Roshni Lamino on Twitter. So today we have a very special guest joining us, Mike Blum with Yay. Pipsqueak Animation. Animation or animation films? Uh, Pipsqueak Animation. Oh, okay. Awesome. Welcome. Yes. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> well, thanks for having me, guys. So you have a very storied history in animated shorts. Why don't you give us a brief overview of how you got into it and what you do? I don't know. I think a half hour last time we heard this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have a storied history, but I have, uh, I have at least a history. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, you know, I started making uh, short films when I was at Disney Feature Animation, um, sort of did them uh, sort of semi-officially and semi-independently. I kind of um, was able to sort of negotiate the use of uh, sort of like Disney equipment after hours, uh, but I was able to sort of um, uh, sort of make whatever it is that I wanted to make. Sort of uh, the deal was as long as I didn't mess up any existing and current production, um, didn't take any resources away, didn't make anyone angry with me, I could kind of do what I wanted. And so I did a series of shorts there, um, and that eventually led to. Uh, me getting my first kind of kind of really professional break um, directing a series of CG animated shorts for uh, for Comedy Central. Uh, that, that series was called The Adventures of Baxter McGuire, and um, I took that opportunity when I got that gig to to leave Disney. I'd been sort of trying to figure out how to make the uh, switch from the sort of day job to the dream job of. Uh, directing um, as my profession, and uh, and so you know you gotta you gotta jump when an opportunity presents, and so I uh, I left, and then I I never went back. And now you have a whole production company. I do. I've got a, a whole <laughs> animation studio that um, I started basically. I say sort of accidentally when I sold um, my first animated series uh, to uh, Defy Media. Um, and, uh, they basically, you know, they said, let's do it. And they gave me a chunk of money and, and then it was up to me to figure out how to get the shorts made. And, um, I initially thought that I was going to use an overseas studio that, you know, maybe one of the many that I had met in my, uh, sort of, uh, travels talking about animation around the world. Uh, but when I sort of started running the numbers, I was kind of like, I think I can just kind of buy some computers and software myself and do it for almost the same price. And then I'd have computers and software, um, after I finished. And so, um, lo and behold, that's what I did. And people started coming to us for, uh, for work for hire stuff, and we started selling other um, series, and yeah, somehow accidentally, I just um, I ended up with this yeah. little mini studio. So, not to let everyone be mis uh, misled, there that is not uh, that three minute intro was was not uh, representative of how long that actually took you. That took uh, how long were you doing that for like a decade or more? Yeah, exactly. It took me ten years working after hours, basically uh, six to eleven. Um, it's not an exaggeration to say like, you know, six to 11, six to 10, six to 11, five or six nights a week, um, pretty much nonstop for 10 years uh, in order to sort of build up um, uh, sort of enough knowledge and sort of gain enough attention for me to be able to actually catch my, you know, really my first um, professional break, you know, and in between all that were, you know, hundreds of film festivals that my films got into and um, lots of awards and, you know, uh, all the sort of like nitty gritty hard grind that goes into just sort of making a name for yourself. It, it definitely is the very furthest thing from an overnight um, success in, in, in any way. <laughs> so over that 
10 year incubation period, what would be some of the things that you thought you, uh, that you would say you learned that you took away from all that? I mean, patience, I think for, for one, and, and also just sort of getting better. When I first started, I didn't even, when I decided to make the first short, I, I wasn't even slated initially to direct. Um, it was intended to be a training project um, for um, the sort of technical departments at Disney Feature Animation. And I just thought it would be good. I was going to produce, um, but I did not know that I even wanted to, to direct. Um, and so, um, you know, over those 10 years, I not only figured out what I wanted to do, but I also figured out how to do it. I mean, it's really not an exaggeration to say that I had absolutely no idea what I was doing for the first, you know, couple of years. Um, but we sort of, taught ourselves with the help of um, many genius production people at Disney, um, really how to make these things from from the ground up. And I really, um, I really just sort of sucked the knowledge out of as many uh, amazing talents at, at Disney as I could to sort of become better at directing, which is really what I realized, um, you know, I got the most thrill from and, and, and really what I um, got the most um, uh, excitement thinking about, you know, sort of working those long hours uh, after putting in a, a full day at, at work work. Um, so yeah, kind of over the period of 10 years, kind of, I got better at everything. My first short, um, you know, I will never show to anyone. Um, <laughs> whereas I'm perfectly happy to show, uh, you know, people, my, my last few shorts there uh, whenever, whenever they want. So um, yeah, you know, you just get better. It's just a craft. So, um, as you know, we're writers, we had you at our writers group recently, and it was really interesting to learn about how you got started. But a lot of, uh, a lot of us were interested in how we would get started in writing and animation. So I guess I kind of want to know, where do you find writers for your projects? And what do you look for in uh, a writer that's wanting to write animation? Yeah, so let me, I'll, I'll start, I have a few things to say. So first of all, I'm always just looking for the, like whether it's writers or animators or anyone else, voice talent, I'm always looking for the people who um, uh, are the best fits. Um, and so, um, you know, sometimes that means working with friends, but oftentimes not. It's uh, if they're not right for the project, then it doesn't serve the project uh, if we don't, you know, sort of bring on the the best people we can find. Um, so in terms of writers, um, you know, most of the stuff that we do is comedy very comedy forward so i'm looking for uh for people who can write funny but also can write with structure um i read a lot like you know when we are um you know when we've sold something and we're looking to staff up it's always a very small writing um uh writing team uh, sort of you know sort of writer's room i do things both uh, similar and different from a lot of people uh, sort of run a writing writing room, but I just read a lot of scripts and it's really just, um, do I vibe to, uh, to the writer? Um, and then additionally, because so much of what we end up doing is super short, I do look to see whether people know how to like write uh, with brevity and make every line count. Um, and it's, um, yeah, I guess it's not as easy as y you think when you sort of are first, you know, thinking about it. Like, oh, it's just a, you know, it's a three-page script. How hard can that be? But within those three pages, I'm always trying to get across a sort of a really solid structure, a beginning, middle, and end, um, and you know, sort of keep the twists coming. And so, how do you do that in three pages and have compelling characters and have something that feels different each episode? Um, it's hard. I've had more than one writer tell me that uh, working on those three page scripts are, if not the hardest, um, some of the most hard writing that that they've done. So I guess it is a, a little bit of a specialized skill. Yeah. I mean, can you take us through a typical project? Like how much time do your writers have to turn something around and things like that? And how many episodes are you writing for an entire season? Uh, so seasons vary depending um, seasons vary depending on the project. Uh, can any be anywhere from like six episodes to a season to I think we've had 14 episodes to a season on certain projects. Um, um, I always like to sort of write the pilot because that's how I really figure out 
the the show, the characters, the tone, um, whatever kind of like structure that we want to replicate from episode to episode, just so I can really figure out, you know, give really good direction uh, um, to the writers, um, you know, kind of what would make an, a, com- a compelling episode and what wouldn't. And, you know, here's why that idea would work or, or not work. Um, you know, we always sort of start with uh, kind of brainstorming, just sort of um, kind of like log lines, uh, just to sort of be able to like springboard off of uh, into an actual episode. Um, and, you know, typically um, writers will, you know, pitch me a, a handful of springboards and we'll talk through them and I'll pick ones that seem like maybe they would have some possibility. I'll talk to the writers about what my concerns are, but if they can solve them, why don't you kind of work on it and come back to me with like a paragraph. Um, and then from there we, you know, we do, uh, kind of what everyone else does. You know, we, we, we outline an outline for a three page script is, um, is short, right. It's like, uh, <laughs> it's like, you know, a couple of paragraphs, but we've really kind of worked through in that outline again, that sort of beginning middle and end where all the turns are going to be. Um, and, um, sort of just making really, really clear where all the, all the beats are going to go. Um, and then they go off and write. And I would say even my process has, has evolved. I think, um, you know, again, you know, you, you're, you're, you learn from doing, um, and you also learn from talking to people, um, through things like this podcasts and reading books and talking to other showrunners. And then you sort of modify, things as you go go forward. So, you know, the way I ran my writer's room for my first series is a little bit different from the way I've done it um, in later series. I think initially I was, uh, I was really adamant that, you know, each writer was responsible and owned their episode uh, to the end. So I would just keep noting them until, you know, every line uh, kind of worked. And by uh, later series, typically what we do is, um, you know, the writer would do their outline, do a couple of passes. And then um, I generally uh, invite the writers, all the writers into sort of a punch up uh, meeting where we just kind of go through and we kind of act out, you know, kind of, you know, we're, we each take parts and we're like acting out um, the uh, the final script and we're just sort of seeing what lands and what doesn't and then we're punching it up line by line and you know typically that might take a few hours two or three hours at the end um, and if we don't get um, you know sort of lines that really work then I'll just take them after that and I'll I'll do a sort of final punch up pass but um, yeah that's that's typically how things go does that answer your question yeah yeah that's great <laughs> Um, with uh, animation, um, because of the production process, do you generally write all the scripts before you go into animation, or is it more like, is it more like TV where they're writing and filming and writing and filming constantly? Uh, yes. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, we try to write as much as we can up front. It just makes it so much easier um, the rest of the production process, but that's not always possible. Um, and I've kind of done this on, on both things. So, you know, not only have we sold shows, but, you know, we've also done shows that like, you know, writers have come to us with, um, with an idea and some financing. And then we kind of work through this, a very similar kind of process. Um, and like for uh, some of those series, yeah, it just like, it just doesn't work. We have to start production before the scripts are written. Um, and, um, and, uh, and sometimes we have more control and we really try to write as many of them as we can before we, we go into production. Um, yeah. So, um, what, what percentage of your, your business is your own creations versus works for hire? Um, that's a good question. I think it varies from year to year. So, um, yeah, it varies from year to year. I'd say that overall, um, the, it's, it's probably as we have gotten more work, as we have gotten more work for hire. So as we have produced more content, more people come to us. So I would say that the percentage of a r- totally original stuff that we do has gone down over the years. Um, and that also makes sense when you think about, um, just how hard it is to, to sell anything. Um, 
you know, you just, it's been very hard for us to sort of just count on building a, a company and for me to have a kind of like steady stream of income by just relying on the sort of, you know, the golden ticket being punished time and time again. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say, you know, early on, you know, majority of the stuff that we did was original content because these things take when we have a, a series that's in production. Um, it typically takes up the vast majority of our time. But over the last few years, I'd say that it's gone down to less than 50%, um, again, because of those two factors that, um, yes, yeah, sort of success begets other kind of success, maybe not in sort of yeah. like um, a direct one-to-one correspondence. But I think overall, like when you sort of consistently produce good work, um, it just increases your chances of uh, of gaining additional work. Um, and, and it's hard to sell stuff. So, you know, we didn't sell anything last year and the year before we had stuff in development at Cartoon Network, but it didn't go to series. So, you know, um, yeah, those just, that's just like the way the industry works, I guess. But at least you guys are working steady. So that's awesome. Yeah, no, it's it's not all original. (laughs) Yeah, no, no. You know, I I think that the longer I've been doing this and I've been doing this for a really long time, uh, the more I appreciate, you know, each and every time uh, some individual or corporation uh, gives us money and entrusts us to be creative uh, either on, it's really, you know, for them. So even the original stuff that we do, ultimately we are doing it for someone, right? Um, yeah. uh, you know, it is a company that has paid money and they expect a product. Uh, it is more fun when you're doing something that you've come up with and you've created um, and have a real ownership over. But I sort of take pride in um, applying those same kind of feelings and standards when people come to us with their idea that they need us to do. And, you know, you find um, a creative outlet for all those projects as well. And sometimes it's, um, you know, it's less of your creative input because there's more stuff that's predefined for you. And other times the work for hire is incredibly creative. You know, we did a work for a live action documentary that was just on PBS a couple of months ago where, um, you know, the filmmakers that we were working with were, you know, just amazing people and amazingly talented. And they trusted us to bring all of our talents to bear to um, what we were producing to help tell their story. Um, and it was one of the most creative projects that we've ever worked on. So I'm I'm super proud of that um, in the same way that I'm proud of the stuff that we've developed and sold and then, and then made. So, um, yeah, I mean, I just think I think you have to have that attitude. Otherwise, um, yeah, it's kind of a, a miserable life. So um, yeah. <laughs> it, it, just, it just is, right? I mean, it's it's really a joy. I, I, I'm i not being facetious or sarcastic at all. It really is a joy um, to have people uh, entrust you uh, with with their hard-earned capital to um, to be creative. So, yeah. Worst things you could do for a day job, right? Yeah, you know, and I've, I've spent I've spent many years doing things that are 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 much worse. So yeah, this is a great part. <laughs> so if people want to find you online. How can they find you? Uh, so uh, the website is uh, pipsqueakfilms.com. So uh, p i p s q u e a k films plural dot com. Um, and we're on uh, Twitter uh, at pipsqueakadam and. Facebook as well. Uh, hit us up. Um, we are always open and available. So, um, and uh, cool. if anyone wants to see animated, <laughs> come and uh, check us out. Send me an email. <laughs>